Some bulbs to make the garden bright is actually one of my favourite episodes in series two of When the Boat Comes In. This is basically where Les Mallow blackmails Jack Ford. And it's interesting at the beginning, he really thinks he has him. And it's really terrible the way he got the information out of Matt Headley because he'd been out with Matt and Tom. Matt had too much to drink and he divulged uh, what happened in Mamansk in Russia. So then, of course, uh, Les has got this information and he tries to blackmail Jack. And of course, um, it doesn't work, does it? But to begin with, it does seem like what's Jack going to do in this situation? Wasn't too good last night, was I? I wouldn't say that much. I wouldn't say that at all. Of course, Tom Seaton returns home to the Seaton family and he tells them that he's going to be a job and gardener. And Bill, of course, isn't happy about this because he wanted him to follow his way into the family business. But of course, Tom says that he hasn't got the brains for this, for this shopkeeping lark. And yeah, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? I think Tom just wants to be his own man, doesn't he? He wants to do what he wants to do and he wants to prove that he can do it. Thank you very much. All I need. Tommy and Mick. That's what I can do, Dad. Make things grow. You be stubborn here? All right, as long as I'm wanted. Oh, you want it, all right. Great to hump. And it's quite funny how you have the Seaton family kind of in different camps politically now. Of course, you have Billy and Jesse there together, along with Les Mallow, you think, at this point. And then, of course, you have uh, Bill, who has turned a into a sort of capitalist now, hasn't he? Because he's a shopkeeper. He's all about making money. He wants to get on. And, and of course, you've got Tom now as well, sticking up for his Mara Jack Ford. So yeah, it's very interesting with all that. And it seems like Tom and Billy might have a fight. The mum, Bella, tries to interfere. But um, as Bill says, they're grown men. They'll do it their way, not your way. Yeah, I mean, I did really like that, actually, how you could see that. And you do see that in families, how politically people's opinions are different. And I just really, I think it really added to the story that they went different ways. And of course, after Bill had his pit accident and he became a shopkeeper, he was going to change, wasn't he? He was going to change his political views because they would be different from when he was a pitman. Bloody red. Socialist dad, same as you. Aye. Uh, well, I've been thinking about that. Well, have you now? What did Mr. Mallow want? He came to tell us some things about Jack Ford. What about Jack? Mamansk. Eh? Russia, ma'am. Seems like a wonderful Jack has no been such a hero. Well, nobody is. And it's none of our business, now you remember that. I'm not so sure. But you better be. You shut the shop, have you? Aye, I took four and sevenpence. No tick. Les Mallow's up to his ears in muck. There's no call for you to go and join him. I wouldn't say that. You weren't in the blue bell last night. I was. You don't seem to have done much to stop it, then. Well, there wasn't much I could do. Anyway, Jack can handle it. And if he can't, he knows where I live. But mind, you keep out of it. Suppose I don't. Then I'll hammer you, Billy boy. I'll hammer you flat. So Matt comes home drunk and you're probably expecting the worst at this point. But really, I think he needed to get drunk after he realises what he has done. He hits the bowl, doesn't he? Because he realises what a terrible thing he's done. He does eventually confront Les Mallow at the pub. And Les basically says he's going to use what he told him, regardless of how he got the information. And Matt says he's harder than Jack. And at this point, actually, Billy does actually kind of stick up um, for Matt Headley, which is admirable. Yeah, I mean, I think he should. He's a nice bloke, isn't he? And it is a terrible way to get information off of somebody after they've had too many drinks. And uh, as Jack says, uh, Les was um, drinking lemonade. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought that was really bad from Les. And I think this is the last time we see his character in the series, actually, I believe. I was Jack at Belcher, I could you know? Wouldn't make any difference, Matt. Ah, oh, you'd still use what I told you. Hey, come on, can I get you drunk, Mr. Headley? No, no, thanks. I've got to be off. Jack has a fight at the pub. Of course, somebody knocks over his whiskey. He does later on say, I keep telling myself it's because somebody knocked over my whiskey, but he needed to have a fight, and he is the way he is. Um, but a funny part later is where you find out that Mrs. Charlton works for the Ashtons, and then <laughs> Jack's sort of denying that um, 
he was involved and um he's like oh i think uh, he should be prosecuted the man who did that to your husband and then the woman's like i'd like to thank him i'd like to shake his hand you know so that's really funny prosecuted i'd like to take him by the hand and say thank you very much charlton still hasn't got the strength to lay a finger on us <laughs> still at it are you jack me Respectable union officials don't get into fights. No, they don't. But you do. Still, very good came out of it. But you didn't know, did you? And you didn't care. If I was a man, I'd hit you myself. You'd end up with a black eye, bunny lass. Jack visits Jesse, and I do love their exchanges, like when they're trying to help each other out, basically. Um, Jesse gives Jack a huge clue to what Les Mallow's sister's occupation is. As it turns out, it's one of the oldest occupations ever. Yeah. <laughs> and that's hilarious, isn't it? Because at this point, you're thinking, how can he get out of this situation? At this point, there's nothing on the table to get him out of it. But Jesse gives him a lifeline. And at the same time, she asks him, is that job for Billy going at the Fitters Union to be a doctor? Uh, so, you know, it's very clever, isn't it? They're both very clever and they're even working together at this point, even though, of course, um, they're no longer together in a romantic way. Um, and they're in, they have a very interesting relationship, I would say, even at this point. It's obviously not romantic now, but they still help each other out. Um, but then again, would, would have Jesse said that to Jack if she didn't want this job for Billy? We don't know, do we? Probably not, I would suspect, but yeah, you don't know. I just wondered, you need a doctor's opinion for your compensation cases, don't you? I thought maybe you could use Billy. That's going to be up to him, Bonnie lass. And it's interesting with Matt's place in the family, because to be honest, he seems a bit like a son to Dolly and Jack doesn't he? Because Dolly actually says he's all we've got, you know, so you kind of think of him as a son. I know that sounds a bit bizarre, but it does seem a bit like that, to be honest. And I mean, he's a great character, though, isn't he? I mean, he's so likable. And yes, he does things wrong. He makes mistakes. But as Jack says, he's still the same guy he was when he went to war all those years ago, whereas Jack has changed. He says to Dolly, you should have known me before, but whereas Matt, he's completely the same as he was. You all right? I've just built it, a fella. Time was, that would have done me more good than whiskey. Not any more. Go to bed, Dolly. It's only ten o'clock. We'll have an early night. Jack, you won't... Belt them. You go to bed. I've had me fight for the day. That's all we've got, you know, Jack. I, I do know. Had a wait a bit. Jack visits Jesse, and I do love their exchanges, like when they're trying to help each other out, basically. Um, Jesse gives Jack a huge clue to what Les Mallow's sister's occupation is. As it turns out, it's one of the oldest occupations ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's hilarious, isn't it? Because at this point, you're thinking, how can he get out of this situation? At this point, there's nothing on the table to get him out of it. But Jesse gives him a lifeline. And at the same time, she asks him, is that job for Billy going at the Fitters Union to be a doctor? Uh, so, you know, it's very clever, isn't it? They're both very clever and they're even working together at this point, even though, of course, um, they're no longer together in a romantic way. Um, and they're in, they have a very interesting relationship, I would say, even at this point. It's obviously not romantic now, but they still help each other out. Um, but then again, would, would have Jesse said that to Jack if she didn't want this job for Billy? We don't know, do we? Probably not, I would suspect, but yeah, you don't know. I don't think she was keen on the whole blackmailing from Les Mallow, to be honest. Um, I don't even think Billy was. Um, but I think it's because of Matt Headley. He was the one involved. I mean, out of all of them, he was just an honest chap, wasn't he? And he just had too much to drink. He said too much. And it was kind of, well, I think it was out of order, really, the way he got the information and used it against him. A word I said, and that's all. 
And don't let me catch you out again tonight. I won't, Mr. Armstrong. See ya. I won't let you catch us. Come to preach, have you? Me? Never in the world, Miss... Uh... Caravers, Fleur Caravers. That's funny. I thought your name was Daisy Manning. What are you after? Oh, just a chat for me. Maybe a drop of this, eh? Holy. It's a funny thing, that. Last night in London, I met a lass called Fleur. Only one time her name was Daisy. And that's a flower and all. Isn't that You're funny? rotten. Don't start anything. I'll enjoy it, Les. You won't. Sit down. This, uh, Fleur is a working girl, Les. Night shifts, mostly. Twenty quid a week. Sometimes more. Mind you, she sends a bit home to her brother. That's for me mother, damn you. How can I get me mother when I'm out of work? Does your mother know what your daisy's up to? No, of course not. She thinks she's in the service. Well, like those two fellas in that story, Les, maybe you've heard it. There's this preacher, like that could be you, Les, and then there's this randy soldier, like that could be me. And the soldier sees the preacher talking to these tarts, and he says, What are you doing, Reverend? And the preacher says, I'll save fallen women. And the soldier says, well, save one for me, will you? Do you get it, Les? Yes, I get it. You're living on immoral earnings, Les, and so is your mum. But with Les Mallow, where would you rank him as, like, one of the nemesis of Jack Ford? Like, where is he? Is he number one? Is he two? Is he three? I mean, there's quite a few, isn't there? Even Manners later on becomes a bit of a nemesis for him. And also you have the, the guy, uh, Colfax, yes. I mean, I think Colfax is probably the biggest adversary for Jack Ford later on. But at this stage, um, I'd definitely say with Les Mallow, he was the biggest enemy for Jack. And he's dealt with completely because I don't believe we see him again in another episode, which is kind of a shame. Um, although I didn't like him, obviously, because you, you're meant to like Jack, aren't you? You're meant to like... <laughs> Uh, Jack and uh, all the other characters but yeah good character but yeah I think he was a lot more evil wasn't he the second time around the first time around he seemed all right I mean quite political obviously um, but he did he seemed more I mean not real but I mean there was no edge to him there was no nastiness the original Les Mallow whereas the second Les Mallow I mean cock Polar opposites, really, I thought. Um, but it's interesting, it does happen in shows, doesn't it? They have to recast characters, and what do you do? It's a hard situation. Later on, it happens with Lady Caroline, who we haven't met yet in the series. And that was very odd for a lot of people, because the Lady Cal Caroline, the first Lady Caroline, was amazing. And the second one, I don't know I'm saying she was terrible, but again, they seemed very different personalities. Um, but it must be very difficult when you have to recast uh, great uh, characters. Well, thanks a lot for listening to When the Boat Comes In podcast. There'll be more of these, of course. I'm going to keep doing it until the end of the series. End of series uh, four. Yeah, there were four series. So we still got quite a few to go, though, of series two. As always, you can check out the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon Music. And, of course, it's on YouTube as well. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Bonnie lad, Bonnie lass. When the boat comes in.